What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. Uh, this this channel has kind of turned into me reacting to Bleach Report articles because that's fun, especially when it's trade related. And we got another one, one off season trade idea for every NBA team, huh? Yes, sir. Let's get it to it. Um, I'm super excited for this one because the the cover poster is my guy Zach Levine, and I'm guessing based on the. The other guy, they have Zach Levine getting traded to the Grizzlies in some type of trade. Dealing with Dylan Brooks. So let's see. Um, last time we looked at a trade article was a couple days ago. And I would say 85 to 90% to of that was like, why? So it is a different Arthur. Author? Author? Let's see what he thinks. Shout out to Greg Schwartz. Hopefully you bring the heat. Let's get it. The Atlanta Hawks would trade up. Um, they get the first overall pick to draft Anthony Edwards to keep him in Georgia, keep him in the, in the Atlanta area. And then the Timberwolves would get the sixth overall pick of DeAndre Hunter. I do not think this is a trade that the Timberwolves would do. Um, if anything, they're trying to make a trade that significantly helps them right now. If they're going to trade the first overall pick, they're going to trade for a guy that can come in and immediately be an impact player. I'm not saying DeAndre Hunter's not that because I don't know what his sophomore season holds. But if they're going to trade the first overall pick, they want to go and get a third guy. Not not like a third star. I'm not saying another all-star caliber player, but like a nice, nice, really good role player. DeAndre Hunter didn't have a great rookie season. So I don't see them trading down to bring him in when they have uh, playoff aspirations, I guess. So, cool for the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, that would be a good trade. That, that frees up some stuff for Cam Reddish to get a lot of those small four minutes. And then, of course, you get the second overall pick. You bring in Anthony Edwards. I would like that for them. But uh, for the, the Timberwolves, probably not so much. 0 for 1. Then, with the Boston Celtics, they have Jared Allen getting traded for Robert Williams, Carson Edwards, and a 2021 first-round pick. I don't see why the Brooklyn Nets do this deal. Um, yeah... I mean, the Boston Celtics probably say yes. I know people love Time Lord. I like Carson Edwards a lot, but there is one position on their roster that could use an upgrade. Daniel Tice is cool. He, he's been doing his job very well, but an upgrade in what it says here in the rebounding problem would be Jared Allen. But again, I don't know if the Brooklyn Nets do this deal. I just don't know what they get out of this, especially a lottery protected pick. And for a team like the Boston Celtics, I mean, the Brooklyn Nets that are trying to win a championship, bringing in Robert Williams and Carson Edwards doesn't really raise the ceiling of your team more than having Jared Allen. Next, the Brooklyn Nets. Okay. All right. Blake Griffin, my boy Blake, for Spencer Dinwiddie, Torian Prince, and Garrett Temple. If anything, I like this for Blake Griffin to get him in a situation where he can compete. Because uh, we know when Blake Griffin is healthy, like completely healthy, he can be really good. Think about that last year in Detroit. Um, he could be really, really good. So I would like that for him. I would think that the Brooklyn Nets would probably shoot a little bit higher. They'll shoot a little bit higher. Maybe they have to settle here with, with Blake Griffin, but I think they're shooting a little bit higher if they're going to start trading away pieces. I do like this deal for the Pistons, too. Spencer, did when he come back to the Pistons? What? So I, I like this deal for both teams. Um, Pistons, we get off that contract of Blake Griffin, and then, in Detroit, and then then Brooklyn gets Blake hoping that he's healthy. So, so far, not terrible. Not terrible so far. The Charlotte Hornets. All right. So, the Charlotte Hornets received the 21st overall pick from OKC, a 2020 second round pick from the Knicks, Zaire Smith and Al Horford for Terry Rozier and Cody Zeller. I don't hate this deal either for both teams. Let me explain why. Philly gets another ball handler that they could desperately need. Y'all saw when Ben Simmons went down with his injury. They didn't really have any ball handling. Terry Rozier could do that. Um, Terry Rozier is a bit overpaid, but he had a really good first season for his standards and, and with the Hornets, so I could see that. Cody Zeller adds some more depth to the center position. So I understand why Philly would do this, especially since you get off that contract, right? Why the Hornets do it is because they're a team that's trying to do that, hit the rebuild, do all of that. So you get another first round pick, and though it is the 21st overall, you can hit a gem if you're smart with your drafts. Um, another second round pick, you get Zaire Smith, you can take a flyer on because, I mean, he hasn't really done much in his NBA career so far, but he was drafted where he was for a reason. We know the potential he could have. And then you bring in Al Horford. So you get a bad contract, but it's not like you were using that money for anything else. You know what I'm saying? And then with this, you free up Vontae to be the primary guy on the in the guard position. Maybe I don't love it too much for the Hornets, but I can see a situation where it would be an okay deal for them. You get me? Next. Okay, here are the Chicago Bulls. We get the first overall pick and James Johnson. We trade them the fourth pick, the second a second round pick, Thaddeus Young, Chan Lunson, and Daniel Gafford. I don't hate this trade for the Bulls. Um, 
I'm trying to see from Minnesota's standpoint. Again, like I said with the first trade of the Atlanta Hawks, if I think of the Minnesota Timberwolves are trading that first overall pick, they're trying to get a guy in that can immediately come in and be an impact player. And you're not getting that with Thaddeus Young, Chandler Hutchinson, and Daniel Gafford. And though all three are great contributors, they're not going to be, none of them are going to be that guy. Um, so why the Bulls, I, I would like this deal other than like, I really don't want to give up Daniel Gafford. I think he, he could be really decent in his league. If that means trading up to the first overall pick, you have to take some casualties. So I wouldn't be against this as a Bulls fan, but I again, don't see the Minnesota Timberwolves making a deal like this. Next, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Okay. They get Julius Randle, Alfred Payton and Kevin Love gets to New York. It's kind of a wash of a deal. I mean, Kevin Love in New York would be cool, but I don't really have an opinion on this. It don't seem like it helps it's either of the team too much. So we'll keep it moving. The Dallas Mavericks get Patrick Beverly. In exchange, they trade Maxi Kleber, DeLon Wright, and a 2020 second round pick. That seems a bit uh, a, a pretty decent sized package for a guy like Patrick Beverly. Maxi Kleber's cool. I really like Maxi Kleber's game. I think that they might be giving up a little bit too much for what Patrick Beverly brings. And now the dog's coming in, sniffing around. Next, the Denver Nuggets. Uh, they fixed it. So somebody sent me this screenshot. This trade had originally said Denver, uh, uh, Chicago Bulls receive instead of these two teams. And I'm like, wait, what? So, okay, they fixed it. They get, they edited the article. The Denver Nuggets received Derek White and the San Antonio Spurs get a, the 22nd overall pick this year, Katie Bates, Diop, and Monte Morris. I don't think Spurs fans would be happy with this at all. They really love Derek White, and I can see why. Once I saw him in a bubble, like, really sat down and really paid attention to Derek White, I can see why Spurs fans really like him. He plays good defense. And, I mean, I saw him in the playoffs, too, last year, so I'm not trying to act like this is my first time seeing him. Um, but I, I didn't really watch that much of the Spurs regular season this year. So seeing him in the bubble um, was, was was a little something. I don't think they want to do this deal because they do believe in Derek White. But the thing is, he's up for a new contract soon. And I don't know what his his value is. I can see the Denver Nuggets doing this in a heartbeat. Like I give up Kade Bay's Diop, who doesn't play for us. Monte Morris, who's been a good backup. But it ain't, he's a backup at the end of the day. He's replaceable. And a 22nd overall pick to get a guy like Derek White, who's like 6'3", good defender, Plays his role very well. I would do this in a heartbeat if I'm the Denver Nuggets. But for the Spurs, it might, I might be just a little bit hesitant. Next, the Pistons are trading with the Bulls. Okay. So the Bulls are giving up Chandler Hudson, Luke Cornett, and the fourth overall pick. And we're getting back Derrick Rose and the seventh overall pick. D. Rose back in Chicago, baby. Um, it'll be hard to convince the fans to get the seventh overall pick again. That's all I'm really trying to say. It will be hard. To convince the fans to get the seven overall, overall pick again. But if our front office sees somebody that they really love and they know that they can get him at seven, do the deal. Do the deal. If they, if you know that the, the guy that you want in this draft will be there at seven, why not get Derrick Rose back to Chicago? I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against it at all. You know me. Next, the Warriors. Actually, overall, if I'm grading this trade, I think it's a good trade for both teams. In this situation, again, if the Bulls believe that the guy that they want can be there at seven. Okay, so next. Uh, the Warriors, they trade a second round pick and get Dennis Smith Jr. and Todd Gibson? I mean, I I guess. That's kind of a lame trade. Move on to the next one. The Houston Rockets. I've seen a trade like this often. At first, I saw like Eric Gordon for Al Horford straight up, one for one. But this one has Al Horford in 2021 first round pick and then a second round pick from the Knicks. For Eric Gordon, Daniel House, and Austin Rivers, you're giving up a lot of depth to get in Al Horford. And though they can use a guy like Al Horford in his massive contract, I just don't think it's a good deal to give up that much depth for a guy that has is we can agree is on a decline, is on a huge contract. I do not like this deal for Houston. Don't do this deal, Maury. Next, Indiana Pacers, buddy healed for Victor Oladipo. I can see that's a, this is a worthy trade for both teams. With Buddy Hill basically want to be in, being out of Sacramento, we're not liking his role anymore. And then with the Indiana Pacers not knowing what Victor Lipo's value is and not wanting to pay him once his contract is up, I can see this as an even basically one-for-one one deal because a second-round pick is a second-round pick. I can see both teams benefiting for this or thinking that, hey, not a bad not a bad chance of us taking on Victor Lipo because we know what he could be and then not a bad chance to take it on Buddy Hill because we know what he could be. So, so far, Greg Schwartz, not terrible trades. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to come up with a trade article for every team. I give them that. Next, the Clippers. Our trade is Zubac, Zubac, Landry Shamit, Magruder, and a second round pick for Miles Turner. I don't see why the Pacers do this too much. 
unless they're trying to have Sabonis slide over to the five and just open things up for him. But overall, I think Miles Turner is an impactful enough player for them that they would want just a bigger package than this. I think Zubac can be good, uh, but we saw just recently that like there's this certain group of bigs that he just cannot hold his own with <laughs> like we saw that in the game yesterday he just cannot hold his own against certain bigs who and like the bigs that are able to stretch and the bigs that are fast he can't hold his own either of those two and we're getting to the point where most of the bigs fit that um and miles turner is a good defender man what can i say he's a good defender lakers Ooh, they traded the whole team danny green cal kuzman contavious call with pope in the second round pick for gordon hayward um for the celtics this kind of adds another problem. Like, the Celtics have some of the best wing depth. You know what I'm saying? Well, actually, other than the couple guys that they have that's starting, I mean, Danny Green coming off the bench, Katavis Caldwell Pope coming off the bench would be a lot better than what they have now. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Gordon Hayward, obviously, even though he had a good season, we, could, we, we have been seeing them be successful without him. So you trade him, improve your depth. I could see that being an okay trade for them. Uh, contingent on them, Danny Green can hit his shots. Or Catavius Caldwell Polk can hit his shots. Uh, but for the Lakers, get a third guy. Again, as a third, fourth guy, Gordon Hayward is really good in this league. I don't hate this trade for both teams, but I'm sure there's gonna be Lakers fans and Celtics fans that both hate it because it's just the way fandom works. Here's the here's the trade of the, the whole thumbnail. Zach Levine for Brandon Clark, Dylan Brooks, and Grayson Allen. Well, I'm gonna politely decline this trade. Um Thank you for the offer. But the reason I am declining is because we already have a front court that we like with Larry Market and Wendell Carter. Um, Brandon Clark and Zach Levine are actually like eight months apart in age. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like we're getting younger. Dylan Brooks is, I like Dylan Brooks sometimes, but he has this tendency of taking shots. So you're like, bro, that's not a good shot. And then Zach Levine has a tendency too, but Zach Levine is actually a better player. So Zach Levine taking a not so good shot is just. A bit better than Dylan Brooks taking a not so good shot. You know what I'm saying? I don't like this deal. I'd rather I'd rather keep Zach Levine on the roster. But I could, I mean, Bulls fans, there is a camp that really wants to keep Zach Levine. There's a camp that would rather trade him away. And I'm like right here in the middle. If if the right deal is there, I'm okay with with trading Zach Levine. But I'm not just gonna trade him just because. You know what I'm saying? And that that seems like a just because trade. Even though again, I really do like Brandon Clark. If y'all remember my rookie draft class video from the 2019 draft uh brandon clark was one of my five favorite rookies and he exceeded expectations this year but it's just with the chicago bulls it would be weird to have him larry market and window carter together it's kind of like a log jam out there the miami heat are traded bam out of bio kendrick nunn iggy kelly olenic for joel b we saw this in the last video i don't want to talk about it too much so if you missed that video go watch it um i like bam with the the heat culture i wouldn't trade him away i think he has Endless, endless potential right now. Milwaukee Bucks get a guy that they could get, give it to and get a bucket. CJ trading away for Dante DiVincenzo, George Hill. Oh my God, they're giving up the whole barn. But I think this is a bad, a, a bad trade. Oh no, a good trade for Milwaukee because you need something. You need to somehow convince Giannis to stay once that contract is up. And CJ could potentially do that. But for the Portland Trailblazers, you know, kind of a eh. You, you're taking a step back for sure with trading away CJ. And Dante's cool. George Hill is cool. But you, again, you're taking a step back. And it would be really on Damian Lillard's back if you didn't think it was before. Next. The, Bull, the Bulls are in like 70 trades so far. Come on, bro. Like, I, I understand. We got assets here. We got good assets. But trading Larry Mark in the fourth overall pick for the first overall pick, Josh Okogie and, and Jake Lehman. Why would we do this deal? Then you gave us a way better deal with Thaddeus Young in it. Why would the Bulls trade Larry Marketing when we can trade Thaddeus Young and get the same draft pick? I don't, I don't like that trade. Next, the Pelicans. J.J. Redick, old self, Josh Hart for Miles Turner. J.J. Redick's good at, at a couple things and shooting is one. Um, Miles Turner is like the prototypical big. I would love to put along Zion Williamson because he majority of his shots come from the perimeter anyway. And, of course, he protects the paint. I would love to see him with the Pelicans. But I don't know if this is enough assets for them to do, especially with J.J. Redick being 36 years old, basically, and Josh Hart just being cool. Um, but I think Miles Turner could be a guy that's going to get traded for less than what the, what I would think he's worth, you know, next, the Knicks trade up, whatever it is, trade anything to trade up. If you want LaMelo, if LaMelo is your guy, trade it all to get the first overall pick. In this case, it has them trading the eighth overall pick, a Dallas pick from the Porzingis trade, Frank Nielakina and Todd Gibson. 
Um, I don't see why the Minnesota Timberwolves would do this unless they, for some reason, they don't love any of the top seven prospects and they'd rather get somebody at eight. Um, but if I'm the Knicks, I, there's nothing that is untouchable in our repertoire. Picks, players, if you if you want LaMelo Ball or whoever it is at number one, do it all to get that number one pick. Okay, see, trading Chris Paul for Gary Harris, Will Barton, Demonte Morris. Um, this will allow Jamal Murray to play probably his natural position of the off guard. And of course, I mean, we saw Chris Paul play with three guards this season, right? Where he can play off ball two. And you saw him do it with James Harden. He can play off ball very well. So they can take take turns uh, being the primary ball handler. But from OKC's aspect, I feel as though with Chris Paul, I think he's not a negative asset anymore because we just saw him be incredible for an entire season and a postseason. So for a while, people were thinking that Chris Paul, in order to get rid of his contract, we'd have to, I say we, but I'm talking about like front offices, would have to attach a pick or attach a future asset to get rid of his contract. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think I think there's a team, there's teams like Denver, like Milwaukee, like New York, that would be willing to take Chris Paul's contract because they believe that what he did this year could be something that he can replicate next year. Um, and if that's the case, I don't think this package is great, but I could see it being cool enough for them like, okay, deal. We don't have to pay Chris Paul 44 to $47 million a year. Cool. And then we could bring in a guy like Gary Harris, who we've seen be really, really good at times and really bad at times. And maybe we just a change of scenery can help him. Him, Shea Gibbs, Alexander, Dennis Schroeder could be the new three guard lineup and um, have him play that defensive role, I guess. I don't hate this trade for both teams. Next. Orlando Magic are trading Darius Garland for Mobamba. Okay. You see, you see, literally no opinion on that. Uh, True Holiday and J.J. Redick traded to Philly for the 21st overall pick. A 2022 lottery protected Josh Richardson and Al Horford. Um, so both of these guys, Drew Holiday and J.J., go back to Philly. You know, I would love that for Philly. But you have to think about wh why do the Pelicans do this? Um, I mean... I was going to say to get younger because you get those two first, those two first round picks. Josh Richardson's obviously younger than, than J.J. Andrew. But then you bring in the Al Horford contract. And you're going to also have to pay Brandon Ingram if that's the plan. And then eventually you're going to have to pay Lonzo if that's the plan. Then you're going to have to play Zion. All while Al Horford's contract is still on the books. Something I wouldn't really want to do. Phoenix? You trade Marvin Bagley, Nemanja Bialica for Kelly Oubre and Cam Johnson? No. I'm not trading these two dudes for a guy that we don't even know if he can play more than 50 games in a season. You know? And I, I honestly believe that Cam Johnson at the four alongside DeAndre Aiden is a match made in heaven, bro. I really do. I don't know Marvin Bagley alongside DeAndre Aiden, even though the potential will be super high. Because though Bagley, people laugh at the Bagley pick and him be a second overall, his potential is still there. It's just about staying healthy, right? I think the potential of them playing together can be really cool. But I really do believe that the Cam Johnson, DeAndre Aiden front court can be great. I really do. It opens things up so much more that to the point where Marvin Bagley wouldn't really be able to open the floor up like that. And the Kelly Oubre is a guy I do think will probably get traded in the next year or so. Trailblazers trade, Zach Collins, Rodney Hood, Trevor Reza for DeMar DeRozan. And I'm guessing this is if DeMar DeRozan takes his uh, his player option, which he probably will because it's worth like $28 million. Um, this is a way for the Spurs to get rid of him. And this is a way for the Portland Trailblazers to get better. I would not be against this trade for both teams. I really wouldn't be. If the goal for the Spurs is to be like, okay, next chapter, DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus didn't work out, then I'm cool with this deal. If that is their plan. Lex, we have Cal Kuzma for Bogdanovich. They already said that they're going to match anything Bogdanovich related. So them matching it and then trading him for Cal Kuzma and Danny Green doesn't make sense to me. Spurs trade LaMarcus Aldridge for the 16th, oh, 18th overall pick. Maxi Kleber, Dwight Powell. I like this trade too. Again, if the Spurs think that their plan is to separate DeMar and LaMarcus, sure, you get the 18th overall pick, and the Spurs have been notoriously really, very good at drafting uh, right outside the lottery or, you know, late in the first round. Maxi Kleba seems like a Spurs-type player too, and then Dwight Powell gets traded for like the fourth, fifth time in his career. Tragic. Raptors, sign and trade for Surge. You get more shooting and Zubac, sure. Utah Jazz, uh-oh, three-team trade. Okay, Utah gets back Gordon Hayward. Then they boo him, boo him. Utah fans, how you feel about that? 76ers get Mike Conley. Okay. 
the Boston Celtics get Tobias, Tobias Harris. Ooh. Um, Boston fans, how y'all feel about having to pay Tobias Harris max money? I don't think you're going to like that too much. Especially considering Gordon Hayward's contract is up in like a year and a, a year and a half from now. You know, and then you also have to pay Jason Tatum soon. So you're gonna have you're gonna have four max players, basically, because Jason Tatum's gonna get a max. Jalen Brown got a max or close to it. Kimba got a max, and now you're gonna pay Tobias Harris max. I wouldn't like that if I was y'all. Personally, I would not like that if I was Boston. And then last trade is Vucevic getting traded to oh to Washington. Vucevic in the 15th overall pick allows the Orlando Magic to move up to the ninth pick, get Thomas Bryant, a young player, get a bunch of young players in a Ish Smith for the ninth pick. Um, Vucevic has been on the trade market for like 12 years now. So to finally get him in a different place, Vucevic is, a, is an impact player. You know what I'm saying? Uh, depending on what John Wall comes back and looks like, John Wall, Bradley Beal, Vucevic, again, could, depending on if. John Wall is good, or at least close to good. That's probably a playoff team. Where Rui Hachimura, and then the wing, the other wing position would be up in the air, I guess, because you're trading Troy Brown Jr. And I can't even think about who's the backup small forward of that team because I wasn't watching like that. I don't hate that. Uh, okay, article better. These trades are significantly better than the one we reacted to a couple days ago. Are they all great? No, but it was fun. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. Subscribe to Kenny for real. Subscribe to all the other channels. Always in the description. I'm out. Peace.